today, the FDA and the CDC authorizing a second booster shot of the Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna coronavirus vaccines for people 50 and older. Yeah, the shots can be given at least four months after a first booster dose. This coming as we are starting to see more cases of coronavirus and a new subvariant called BA2. Experts believe even a short term immunity boost among those at risk for severe illness could provide a valuable layer of protection. So joining us now to talk about this new development, Dr. David Bannock of UConn Health. Uh, Dr. Bannock, thanks for joining us at Hallways. Uh, and it sounds like maybe this is a, a, a just in case kind of a move with the possibility of BA2 causing another surge. So, you know, I think um, this comes um, at the same time that we're seeing a, an increase in BA2 um, uh, infections accounting for our overall number of infections. You know, I think, um, you know, this uh, second booster is really um, focused in on individuals who are um, older, individuals that may be um, at higher risk for severe disease. So, you know, I think that, uh, you know, the two coming together, um, you know, it's important, you know, we're thinking about what uh, the next few week, weeks and months may look like. You know, Dr. Bannock, I was just talking about this with loved ones who are over the age of 50 this morning. So how urgent would you say is this? Do you think everyone 50 and older should rush out and get that second booster right away? So, you know, I think it does become an individual decision to some degree. Um, you know, I think the data from Israel does support that um, those who got a, a second booster um, who are older than 60 um, or in that older age group uh, generally um, do have a lower risk of infection and even a lower risk of COVID associated mortality. So, you know, I think the data, you know, it does uh, support the benefit of this uh, second booster. And I think the groups that we're really focused in on are those who are older, particularly above age 65, and then those in the 50 to 65 um, age range who may have a medical condition that puts them at higher risk for severe infection. Those are really the groups that would benefit most from uh, this second booster that's being authorized. So here's another thing some people might have questions about. The CDC also said today, uh, those who initially received that uh, one dose J&J &J vaccine should get an mRNA booster, uh, which would be the Pfizer or uh, Moderna. Why is that? So, you know, I think, um, you know, this stems from uh, some of the data that's come out um, that shows that, you know, the um, the immune response from that booster when it's an mRNA booster seems to be more robust than um, an Im immune response from um, a second J&J. &J. Um, and this similar studies have been um, done with the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is the same technology as the J&J. &J. So, you know, I think the main message that's coming out is that um, for that booster effect of increasing um, uh, antibody levels and protection, uh, the mRNA uh, vaccine is the way to go. Wait, I have a question. If you got the J&J &J and then you got an mRNA booster, should you get the fourth booster or are you saying the mRNA was good when you got it this, the first initial booster? So, um, you know, I think um, when it comes to this most recent authorization, um, if you've got an mRNA booster and you're at, at that four month period, uh, your next option would be the mRNA, uh, the second mRNA booster um, after that initial mRNA booster. So, you know, I, I would um, stay with that same uh, with the same type of vaccine, the mRNA booster for that second booster. Um, you know, I think that we're still getting a little bit more data when it comes to this mixing and matching with J&J &J and the mRNA boosters, um, but this expanded authorization would include um, individuals who got uh, the mRNA booster. Okay, Dr. David Bannock with UConn Health, always good to have you on and thank you for your expertise. All right, thanks for having me on.